and his word. Amen. He means a lot to us. He's our great redeemer, our great savior. Jesus. Amen. I, uh, I know that everyone is happy to be in the house of the Lord. We always count it as privilege and honor to be gathered together in his presence and to face at his table. Praise God. Now turn your Bible in uh, the book of Zechariah, chapter 4. Verse 1. And the angel that talked with me came again. This was uh, Zechariah speaking or relating uh, what happened about his visitation. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. And said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes of the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. And I asked and he spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what this be? And I said, No, my Lord. And he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt, be, thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth earth. Praise the Lord. Tayo ay sumadaling manalangin sa Panginoon. Lord Jesus, uh, we are so thankful because you have made us part of this great unveiling of this great uh, unfolding of the word in this age. It's uh, a privilege, Father, Lord, to feast on the revealed word in this hour. And uh, we see, Lord, that you have been a great shepherd to us, continually feeding us with your fresh manna of the hour. And once again, as we approach your word, I pray that you would lead your servant. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit, the guide that you've given us. That whenever, Lord, I come before your children, I know, Father, Lord, that the dove is here, here to lead me. And without that guide, Father, we could not really comprehend the deep things of your word. But we thank you, Lord, because we know that the dove is leading the eagle. And so we ask right now that you would once again lead us as you always do. 
Bless the ministering of your word. Bless your people, Father. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Kayo na po yung mga kaupo. God bless you. Amen. Last uh, Friday, I preached on the message, Stand still and see the salvation of the, of the Lord. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And uh, uh, actually, uh, 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 I was planning to uh, preach a subject today. The na sabi ko na i-hold ko muna, I just want to continue the line of thought na aking uh, tinalakay uh, last Friday. And uh, maybe I could reserve that message sa ating camp uh, itong, darating, uh, itong darating na camp natin sa December 23 to 25. So, reserve that date. Amen. And uh, I believe that... Uh, by God's grace, the Lord will provide a feasting for us, spiritual and natural. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, uh, we want to do that, that before the year ends, we could thank the Lord for all His goodness and His mercies. Tunay nga na napakabuti ng Diyos sa ating lahat, sa ating pamilya sa ministeryo na ipinagkaloob ng Panginoon sa atin. And we have a lot of things to thank God for. And so, uh, uh, we are so grateful uh, sa mga bagay na ginagawa niya sa atin. What a wonderful God we serve. Amen. Amen. We just love Him. Whenever we think about His goodness, about His love, about His mercy, Mga kapatid, I, uh, we just want to praise and worship Him. Amen. Truly that the Lord has been so faithful. Bagamat there are times na nagkukulang tayo sa Kanya, pero ang Diyos ay tapat sa atin. Tapat sa Kanyang salita. Yeah. That is His nature. Sometimes we may be unfaithful to Him, but He will always be faithful to us. Amen. What a loving God we serve. Amen. Hindi siya mahirap mahalin. Amen. Because you could see the beauty of His character, His attributes. I wonder why people, uh, some people don't love Him. But if you really see the goodness of God, brothers and sisters, you would, uh, that is the thing that would attract you to Him. It's His love to us that attracted us to Him. Sabi nga sa Bible that the goodness of God is what leads us to repentance. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, uh, last Friday, uh, we have heard a message, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Because we live in such a neurotic age uh, with all the pressure coming from uh, different sides, different kinds of pressure, economic pressure, domestic pressure, uh, uh, whatever, financial pressure, dumarating sa atin. And sometimes we don't know what to do. We are perplexed. We are frustrated. We are confused. Pero the Lord taught us to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Sabi niya, stand still and know that I am God. Amen. And we know what God can do. We know that God is able to help us. But that is not the only thing na malaman natin sa Diyos. He is not just able to help us, but He is willing to help us. Because a, a person can be able, but not willing. But God is both able and willing to help His children. Amen. 
Kaya, we should always stand still. In other words, uh, don't worry, don't be frustrated, uh, don't be tense. If you are in a difficult situation, just trust the Lord. Amen. And alam nyo, hinahayaan ng Panginoon that we would come in such condition or situation, amen, that the Lord would uh, uh, glorify Himself in our life that the Lord will show Himself real sa ating buhay. Because it's one thing to know about God, but it's one thing to experience God. So God has put us in many different situations because He doesn't only want you to know Him, but to experience Him. Kaya mga kapatid, na kapag ikaw yung nagpuri sa Diyos, umaawit ka mga kapatid, alam mo na may kakibat yun na eksperyensya. Amen. Kaya naiiyak ka na lamang why pagkat nakita mo mga kapatid na tunay ang Diyos, na buhay ang Diyos, at hindi siya nagbabago. Amen. That's why uh, uh, we love Him so much. Amen. What a God we serve. So, whatever situation we are in, we should always trust the Lord. Alam nyo, there are things in our life that are uncertain. Hindi natin alam ang mangyayari bukas. And there are things that are beyond our control. Pero, ayan ay ini, eh, itinakda ng Panginoon ang bagay na yan sa buhay natin. May mga ilang bagay na hindi natin alam. Di ba? Pero, uh, the Lord only revealed to us things uh, on a need basis, kung kinakailangan niyang ihayag, ihayag niya. Kung hindi naman kailangan, hindi. Pero the Lord doesn't reveal everything to us sa ating buhay because the Lord wants us to trust Him. Amen. Panginoon, hindi ko alam ang bukas, but I trust you because we know that you hold the future. At kailanman hindi mo kayo pababayaan because you promised, Lo, I will be with you. Amen. In the good times of my life, in the bad times, Lord, I trust that you are with me. And that's the God that we serve. He is the God that cannot lie. That's one thing about God. That's why you could hold on to God's promises because you know that God cannot lie. That's one thing that God cannot do. He cannot lie. And the Lord always responds to faith. Amen. Because without faith, you could not please God. That's why when you come to God, you must have faith. And he is, uh, you have to believe that He is and the rewarder of Him that diligently seek Him. And we know that faith always releases the power of God. And the power of God brings to pass the promises. That's why we need faith. Now, uh, I'm actually taking my subject here, Zechariah, and uh, yung title ko ay, I'll, I'll be taking it from verse 6. Ang sabi dito, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Oh, it's good to know that. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. In other words, if we could achieve something in the kingdom of God, it's not by our own might. It's not by our own power, but by the spirit of God. That's why no flesh, sabi sa Bible, can glory in His presence. Because you know that whatever you achieve in the ministry, that whatever you achieve in life, amen, it's not by your own might, it's not by your own power, but by thy spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. So you don't take the glory, you give the glory back to God. Kaya nga sabi sa Bible, it's not him that willeth, nor him that runneth, but, of, but him that showeth mercy. Amen. Kaya, you know, the only th valuable things we could accomplish in this life are the things that were inspired by the Spirit of God, led by the Spirit of God. 
Kasi we always find out that whenever we try to work on our own, through the energy of the flesh, we, all, we always fail. If you would always try to work only in the energy of the flesh, you will have disappointments. Parang si Moses, nalaman niya sa kanyang ina that he is a Hebrew. Nalaman na yung mga slaves na minamaltrato sa Egypt ay kanyang mga kalahe. At one time, nagkakaroon na minamaltrato na isang Egyptian o Hebrew, anong ginawa ni Moses? Diniliver niya yung Hebrew and he killed the Egyptian. And the next day, nang nakita niya dalawang Hebrew na nag-aaway, inaawat niya, bakit kayo nag-aaway? Magkapatid kayo, you are brethren. Sino kabaga na, uh, do you think, who are you, that, that you, are, you are making yourself judge over us? Gagawin mo rin ba sa akin yung ginawa mo sa Egyptian? So, nang nalaman ni Moses na <laughs> kumalat, gumakalat na yung balita na siya yung pumatay sa Egyptian, what did Moses do? For fear, he left Egypt. Diba? He ran for his life. He tried to be a deliverer. Well, he was predestinated and ordained by God to be a deliverer. But he tried to do it by, by the energy of the flesh. And what did he found? He found himself frustrated and disappointed. Diba? Pero mga kapatid, when he met the pillar of fire, when he met the angel of the Lord, on Mount Sinai, mga kapatid, sab, uh, nagsinusugo siya ng Panginoon, ayaw pa ni Moses, pero sabi ng Panginoon sa kanya, I will be with thee. I know you tried to deliver you know, the Israelites, uh, but you could not do it because you are doing it by the energy of the flesh. Isa lang yung Egyptian na napatay mo. Isa lang yung Hebrew na na-deliver mo. Pero it's not by might nor by power Moses. If there would be a deliverance that would happen to Israel out of their bondage, it's by the Spirit, saith the Lord. At nakita ni Moses, mga kabatid, that he could not do it by his own might. When he tried to work in the energy of the flesh, it only brought disappointments. Pero munang ang Panginoon ang nanguna sa kanyang buhay. Amen. Pumunta siya sa Egypt. Marali yung mga tao nagtatanong kay Moses, Moses, saan ka pupunta? Pumunta ko sa Egypt. Ano mong gagawin mo doon? I will invade Egypt. What do you mean, Moses? Nagkaroon ka pa ng aliensya sa ibang bansa? Hindi. Sino ka sa mo? Meron ka pa military? Wala. Amen. It's a one-man invasion. Pero hindi ako natatakot. Because it's not by my own might. It's not by my own power. God said, He will be with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And here comes Moses at the age of 80. Amen. Hinarap niya si Pharaoh. Amen. The greatest ruler in Egypt. With a great military might. Pero ang sabi niya, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go. How can Moses speak with such courage? Because it's not by his own might. Alam niya mga kapatid na hinaharap niya ang ruler ng Egypt. It's not by his own might. It's not by his own power. But by the Spirit of the Lord. And when Pharaoh, amen, tried to resist Moses, amen, he saw the power of God plague Egypt. One plague after another after another. Why? Because it's the power of God moving through Moses. Kaya nga sabi ni Brother Barnham, Moses did not do one miracle. Wala kahit isang ginawa si Moses na miracle. It is the angel of the Lord that does all the miracle. Amen. Ang ibig sabihin, walang magagawa si Moses. Wala siyang ma-accomplish. Bagamat gusto niyang i-deliver sila, kung wala ang Panginoon, he would be a failure. He would just be disappointed. At ganun din sa atin, mga kabatid. If we try to work in the energy of the flesh, we would always be disappointed. But if you surrender your life to God and let the Spirit of God lead you, 
maging yung mga kaya, mga bagay na hindi mo kayang i-overcome, yung mga bagay na hindi mo kayang i-accomplish, ay magagampanan mo, makakamit mo, not because you are strong, not because you are powerful, not because you are talented, but because of the anointing of the Spirit of God that is leading you, that is giving you wisdom, that is giving you strength. Amen. And when you see things prosper, and when you accomplish things, nakita mo, Panginoon, hindi dahil ako'y matalino na kaya ko ito, hindi dahil ako'y magaling, hindi dahil ako'y maabilidad, hindi dahil sa, amen, sa aking material possession. Amen. It's done by the Spirit of God. Amen. It's always good to know that. Amen. No flesh can glory in His presence. Kaya nga sabi sa Bible that the Lord used the basest things in this world. Amen. Ang pinili niya yung mga mamababa. Iba. Yung sa mata ng tao disqualified for the job. Maybe they don't have the qualities. Pero pinili ng Panginoon yung mga ordinaryong tao. Yung mga tao na parang sa mata ng, mga, ng, ng, ng mundo ay, ay, ay wala ganong pakinhabang. Pero sila ang tinawag ng Diyos, pinili ng Panginoon. That the Lord may be glorified. Amen. That in their weakness, God would be glorified. Naging map na maging yung mga tao na feeling nila, they are so talented. Feeling nila na maabilidad sila. Amen. God cannot use them at that stage. At that stage, mga kapatid, God has to break them down. Amen. To break them their spirit. Amen. Why? Para makita nila, mga kapatid, that God will accomplish things in their life not because of their talents, not because they are good, but because of the Spirit of God. Amen. Not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit, saith the Lord. I just want to give you a little background sa ating binasa so we could see the context out of this text. I read to you uh, uh, Zechariah 4. This was uh, the time of, uh, of restoration of Israel. Bagat alam natin that they were held captives in Babylon for 70 years because of their disobedience, because of their stubbornness. The Lord has sent messenger after messenger, but they continued resisting the will of God. So God has no other choice but to chastise them. Na bagamat sila ay nawala sa kanila lupain for a period of time because they are elect of God, there's always promise of restoration. Ayun ang kagandahan sa elect ng Panginoon, di ba? Malayo ka man, sirain ka man ng kaaway, paluin ka man ng Panginoon, pero kung elect ka ng Panginoon, there's always restoration and redemption. Kaya nakita natin yan sa history ng Israel, di ba? Pinapalo sila ng Panginoon, nawala sa kala, sa dinis inherit sila ng Panginoon sa kanilang lupain. Pero mga kapatid, ang mga prophets nagpa-prophesy ng mga judgment sa kanila, pero the prophet would also prophesy restoration. Amen. At ganoon din sa atin. Napagandang malaman na kum, uh, kumawala man tayo sa Panginoon dahil tayo elect, ibabalik din tayo ng Panginoon. Amen. Sinira ka man ng kaaway, sinira ka man ng kasalanan, pero mga kapatid, God will restore you back. The Lord will make you whole again. Because God will not let you stay in that condition forever. Amen. Hinayaan ka lang ng Panginoon so you could learn something. Pero ang purpose ng Panginoon, hindi mag i Amen. There's always promise redemption. Hallelujah! Pagkat ikaw ay sa Kanya, at kung sa Kanya kay Hiwo, He will always redeem you back. Because to redeem is to bring back which was original His. Amen. Amen. Kaya salamat sa Panginoon. And in redemption, we could see God's love. We could always see God's love. Now, so for 70 years, they were in captivity. 
Only 70 years because ayan ang prophecy ni Jeremiah that they will be in captivity to Babylon in, uh, for 70 years. And uh, when, uh, at nakita natin how, uh, how Babylon fell into the hands of the Medes and Persian. And this change of powers, alam natin uh, sa panahon ni King Cyrus, to fulfill the words of Jeremiah, niliberate niya mga Israel. Okay, binigyan niya sila ng permission na bumalik sa kanilang lupain. At nakita natin that there were three returns. Okay, the first was uh, led by Zerubbabel. The second was uh, by Ezra. And the third was by Nehemiah. Hindi sabay-sabay. Tulad din naman natin mga kapatid, nang lumabas tayo sa Mystery Babylon, hindi sabay-sabay. May mga nangauna na pumunta dito sa minsahe. Pero may sumunod. So, the first return from the exile from Babylon was led by Zerubbabel. Of course, nang sila'y bumalik sa kanilang lupain, it was a desolate place. Napakarami lang tatrabahuin. Now, could you imagine, for so many years na nag-stay sila sa Babylon, they were already settled there. Marahil marami sa kanila, mayroon na mga negosyo established doon. Uh, yung iba ay marami ng uh, mga tahanan. Pero because of their desire, uh, to go back to the promised land, iniwanan nila yung mga bagay na yon, and they would start from scratch. So, they returned back under the leadership of Zerubbabel. Uh, of course, uh, when they uh, went back, nagtayo sila ng altar to sacrifice to God, and they were given permission by King Cyrus to rebuild the temple. So, this is about rebuilding. That's why when you read Nehemiah, Ezra and Nehemiah, these are restoration books. Okay? Where God, when, when God restored them back to their land, okay, from the captivity in Babylon. So, bumalik sila doon sa lupain, and they have to uh, rebuild the temple. And when they rebuild the temple, hindi sila nag naghanap ng ibang location. No, they have to rebuild the temple from the original site. Pagkat nang pinalo ng Panginoon ng Israel, the Babylonian powers under the leadership of King Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple of Solomon. So you could imagine, mga kapatid, sa yung uh, temple of Solomon, it was a beautiful temple that was built by the son of David, Solomon. Pero it was destroyed. The temple was destroyed. The foundation were destroyed. And when we go to Ezra, this is now about the rebuilding of the temple. Why? Because it was destroyed. How could they bring back the sacrifices, the worship? How could they position the Levites, the priests, if there is no temple? So, they started building back the temple. Of course, they started with the foundation. Now, let me show you something here because we are talking here now about restoration, rebuilding of the temple. Now, yung temple, alam natin that the tabernacle of Moses is the prefigure of Jesus Christ. Natin. Pero yung temple of Solomon is not the type of Jesus, it's the type of the bride. Because that temple was destroyed, but it was restored. Are you catching that? So nakita natin na yung, temp yung temple of Solomon was built that, now I'd, I'd like to catch this, who built the temple it was King Solomon. Who is King Solomon? The son of, a son of, the son of David. Are you catching that? At pagtiting natin natin sa history ng church, who built the church? Sabi ni Jesus Christ, which is the son of David, upon this rock, I will build my church. Do you see that? So, he built the church. Okay. Upon the rock of revelation. Now, because 
Jesus said that, alam natin merong ginamit ang Panginoon. At in laying the foundation, the Lord used Apostle Paul. Tingnan nga natin sa 1 Corinthians. Maganda, mas maganda natin basahin, ano? So we would be more acquainted with our Bible. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. Sabi ni Paul, According to the grace of God which is given unto me. So he was talking about the grace of God that is given to him. Okay, that's the, the gift of God, the grace of God, his apostleship. According to the grace of God which is given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another built it thereon, but let every man take heed how he build it thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now, si Apostle Paul, he likened himself to a master builder. At ang sabi niya dito, I have laid the foundation. Now, why would Peter, why would Paul lay the foundation? Dahil sinabi ni Christ, Upon this rock, I will build my church. Kung walang sinabi ni Christ, I will build ang church. You don't need to lay the foundation. And because with that revelation, ang sabi ni Apostle Paul, I have laid the foundation. Okay? He laid that foundation that no man can lay. And that foundation is Christ. He is the cornerstone that Apostle Paul laid. So nakikita, nakita natin, Apostle Paul laid the foundation and the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, Amen. He called those lively stones from different places to build the habitation of the Lord, which is the temple of God. Now we are speaking here about the temple. Now, it's yung Old Testament that is just a shadow. I'm showing you the reality. So, ang reality ng Temple of Solomon is no other than the church. Nilay ni Apostle Paul ang foundation. And the Holy Spirit started to gather the lively stones, amen, to build this Temple of the Lord. Pero nakita natin, tulad ng Temple of Solomon, the Babylonian power destroyed that temple. Are you catching that? At ganun di sa iglesia. The Babylonian mystery Babylon. The Babylonian system. The denominationalism. Destroy the temple. Maging yung pondasyon na nilay ni Apostle Paul, sinira nila. Pinalitan nila ng creeds at dogmas ng tao. Kaya yung bautismo, in Jesus' name, napalitan ng bautismo sa title ng Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Yung doctrine ng one God, yung pinakapundasyon na nilay ni, 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 ni Apostle Paul ay sinira, nawasak. Pero mga kapatid, alam natin, bagamat nawasak yung Temple of Solomon, Hallelujah! Even the temple was destroyed by mystery Babylon. There was a promise of restoration. Hallelujah! Maging si Daniel, nandoon, binabagit sa, sa prophecy niya, amen, that the, that the sanctuary would be built again. At ganun ang nangyari sa church ages, that, that alpha age, mga kapatid, that the Lord has built. Amen. And Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. Amen. Of the church, anong nangyari? It was ruined. It was destroyed by mystery Babylon. Pero salamat. Pagkat merong propesya that at the last day, God would send Elijah to restore all things. Now, I'd like you to catch this. What would Elijah do? Elijah would come in the time of restoration. 
What is the time of restoration that God will call out His children out of Babylonian captivity? Amen. At nakita natin na si Brother Branham ay type siya ni Zerubbabel. Amen. Anong ginawa ni Zerubbabel? Amen. He led the people. Amen. Out of Babylon. Amen. And when they came to the land, what would they do? They have to rebuild the temple of God. Now look at this now. Nagpagpunta nila doon sa lupain. Ano nga, uh, pagpunta nila doon sa lupain, anong, anong nakita nila? Sira. Pati yung pondasyon. Kaya nga pagbabasayin sa Ezra chapter 3, ang una nilang nilay out or nilay uh, ginawa, yung foundation. And when the, nakita nyo how they rejoice, how they praise the Lord, and nakita nila yung pondasyon ay naitayo muli. Why? Because the foundation was destroyed. Pero, si Siro Babel, mga kapatid, Itatayo niya muli yung foundation. Now, tingnan natin, balik tayo doon sa Sekaraya. I am just giving you a background para makatch niyo ako, no? Now, because we, are, we don't read the Bible like a newspaper. We know that this is a prophetic book. Now, dito sa Sekaraya chapter 4, ginising ng anghel si Sekaraya. Sino si Sekaraya? Okay. Si Karaya ay propeta ng Panginoon. Contemporary niya si Hagay. Okay. At nag-prophesy sila during the time of the rebuilding of the temple. Are you catching that? At dito sa vision ni si Karaya, na ipinakita sa kanya, nakakita siya ng uh, candlesticks. Okay. Nagsabi dito, seven lamps. Okay? Uh, so that candlesticks are really lamps. It's a lamps. They are lamps. Ano, seven lamps. Or we call it uh, seven golden candlesticks. At nakita niya sa lampara na ito, na sa, sa sides on uh, either side of the lamp, ay merong olive trees. So one olive tree, one olive tree on the other side. At itong olive tree ang nagbibigay ng oil. Saan ba nanggagaling yung oil? Sa olive. Diba? Ito yung nagbibigay ng oil para magliwanag yung lampstand. Nag-ibig sabihin, kung wala yung langis, hindi magliliwanag yung lampstand. Are you catching that? So nakita na yung vision na yun. At nang nakita niya yung vision, hindi niya maunawan. Ang ibig sabihin, kaya nagtanong siya doon sa anghel, What are these, my Lord? Anong ibig sabihin itong nakikita ko? Ayang uh, candlesticks uh, with seven lamps at yung uh, mayroong olive trees. Anong ibig sabihin yan? What are these, my Lord? At sabi ng anghel, hindi mo ba nga alam kung anong ibig sabihin yan? No, sabi niya. No, my Lord, hindi ko alam ibig sabihin yan. Now look at this, because the angel would explain about that vision. Okay. Verse 6, ito, ito paliwala ng anghel. And he answered and he spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Who is Zerubbabel? He was the one leading the people for the rebuilding of the temple. This is the word of of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. I like it, I catch this. Ano bang ginagawa nila si Zerubbabel? They were building the temple. Are you catching that? And when they started to build the temple, nagsimula na yung opposition. Yung mga local residents na natatna nila doon, they were trying to hinder them. They would even hire agents to frustrate their plan, sabi sa Bible. And they would even write to the kings of Persia para pagbawalan, para mahinto. Yung paggawa nila ng temple. Kaya, 
they, there was even a time that they were so discouraged after they finished the, the foundation dahil sa mga opposition na dumarating. They were so discouraged. Ayaw na nilang ituloy yung proyekto. Iniwala na lang nila yun. They laid the foundation waste. Hindi nila tinuloy. Why? Because of fear. Because of this opposition. Amen. Na kumikilos sa kanila. Pero sa vision na binigay ng Panginoon kay Zechariah, God was showing them that they could not accomplish the building of the temple by their own might and power. Merong oil doon. And the oil represents the Spirit of God. Grabe ang opposition. Nandiyan yung mga kontra. Amen. Nadi-discourage sila. Amen. At pero sinabi ng Panginoon, yung vision na pinapakita ko sa si Karaya, ito ang ibig sabihin yan. Amen. It's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit, sayad the Lord. Hindi nila kayang i-rebuild yan. Kung wala ang aking Espiritu, they would not accomplish anything. Amen. I have to do something. If they have to rebuild the temple, my spirit should be with them. Kaya anong ginawa ng Panginoon? When they were so discouraged, Amen, when the work of God was put to a standstill, anong ginawa ng Panginoon? The Lord anointed Haggai. The Lord anointed Zechariah. Hallelujah! And prophesy. Why? Pagkat sa panahon na yon, discourage sila. Sa panahon na yon, sabi nila, oh, hindi panahon na i-build natin itong temple. Kung panahon na i-build natin itong temple, sana walang opposition. Bakit ganito? Amen. Kaya mga kapatid, nilangisan ng Panginoon si Haggai and he started to prophesy. At yung kanyang prophecy, mga kapatid, yung minsay ni Haggai, it is tear the hearts of the people. What is that? That is the spirit of of God moving in the hearts of the people, encouraging them to finish the work of God. Hallelujah! Pagkat sa kanilang human energy, they would be discouraged. Sa kanilang human energy, they got frustrated. But when the Spirit of God move, Amen, yung bagay na mahirap, they were able to accomplish. Ayan, sabi ng angel sa kanya, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. At sabi niya, Who are thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel. Ano yung great mountain na yun? Diba? That is the symbol of oppositions. Amen. Because they were encountering oppositions. Even, maging si Zerubbabel, mga batid, Ah, na, na, na discourage siya. Kaya kinakailangan silang encourage ni Haggai at si Karaya. Sabi, who art thou, O great mountain, before the before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain. Nang ibig sabihin, ano mang laki ng opposition na yan na para baga sa isip nyo, hindi na matutuloy. Dahil sa mga paninira nila na, na letter na pinapadala sa King of Persia, na pi-prevent yung gawain, na pi-prevent yung, yung work ng Panginoon. Ano mang glassing opposition yan. Amen. Malaki mang bundok sa paningin mo. It would be complain. Nang ibig sabihin, God will remove every opposition because the Lord will fight for you. It's not by your own might. It's not by your own power. But by the Spirit, saith the Lord. Hallelujah! Kaya mga kapatid, tayo rin sa ating buhay. Kung misan may alam natin ang kalooban ng Diyos. And at times we try to, 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 to do it by the, by the energy of the flesh. Then we get frustrated, we get disappointed. Why? Because the Lord wants you to realize, hindi sa sarili mong lakas, hindi mo sa sarili mong galing, hindi mo sa sarili mong abilidad, but by the Spirit, say it the Lord. At kung misa kapag tinitingnan natin yung mga hindrances, yung mga opposition na di-discourage tayo, 
parang ayaw na nating ituloy. Pero wag kang magalala mga kapatid. If you have this revelation, it's not by your own strength and power, but by the Spirit of God. Ano bang laki ng oposisyon? Ano bang humahad lang sa'yo? Amen. Mga demonyo man hinahadlangan ka para gawin ang kalooban ng Diyos. Wag kang magalala. God can take away those mountains. Oh, who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain. Hallelujah. Thou shalt become a plain. There's nothing impossible to God. Yung bagay na mahirap, yung bagay na imposible, pero kapag ang Diyos ang kumilos, walang imposible. At sabi mo, who art thou, O great mountain? That's the mountain of opposition. Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain. Now, I'd like you to catch this now. And he, referring to Zerubbabel, shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, grace, grace unto it. Ano yung, ano yung headstone? That is the last stone that have, has to be placed to cup the temple, ibig sabihin, to finish. Okay? That's the headstone. That is the finishing stone. Are you catching that? At ang sabi, He, Zerubbabel, shall bring forth the headstone. Ano sabi ito? They're off with shoutings, crying, grace, grace, unto it. Nag-ibig sabihin, mga kapatid, pag natapos yung templo, Amen, pag nailagay na yung headstone at natapos na, yung cupping stone ay nailagay na, yung mga tao magsisigawan sila. Ano yung sisigaw nila? Amen. Grace, grace unto it. Nang ibig sabihin nila, na, na-build namin ito, na-itayo namin ito dahil sa grasya ng Panginoon. Kung walang grasya ng Panginoon, without the Lord's help, without the Lord's mercy, it's impossible for us to build this. Nang ibig sabihin, Amen. Kapag nailagay na yung headstone, Amen. Na tayo ibig sabihin, natapos na yung templo, Amen. Sila'y magpupuri sa Panginoon. Sila'y sisigaw. Grace, grace, grace. It's the amazing grace of God that made us able to do it. Now, catch this now. Verse 8. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, look at this, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. So, sino nag-lay na foundation? Pag sinabing house, temple. Okay? The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. So, yung the same hands na nag-lay ng foundation, his hand shall also finish it. Why? Because he will bring forth the headstone. Yung naglay ng cornerstone, siya rin na maglalagay ng headstone. Okay. Now, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. Na bakit na nilay yung foundation? Pagkat nasira yung foundation. His hand shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. Now, I'll read, I'll read to you uh, the quote of the prophet. Now remember, this is in the time of rebuilding. Are you catching that? It's the time of the rebuilding of the temple, restoration. And I, I, and I showed you the history, kung paano yung temple of Solomon ay nasira. Even the foundation were destroyed. So at the time of the rebuilding, kinakailangan, i-rebuild nila yung foundation from the original place. Now, look at this now. In the message, the message of grace. Sabi ni Barbara Anham, 
We are all acquainted with this scripture that reads the Bible. Okay? Uh, yeah. We are all acquainted with the scripture that reads the Bible. We know that this was during the time of preparation of the restoration of the temple. So he was, Brother Branham is talking here about the time of restoration. Okay? Restoration of the temple. And the temple is the type of the bride. Why? Because the temple was destroyed. Okay. So we know that this was during the time of the preparation of the restoration of the temple. And Zerubbabel was a great prince among the people. Now look at this now. Who laid the foundation of the building. Now, now you, I want you to put on your spiritual thinking. Now look at this because magta-type ang prophet. I want you to put on your spiritual thinking. Anointing jacket this morning as we think. Have you put on your spiritual thinking? We need this anointing jacket this morning as we think. And this great prince, referring to Zerubbabel, had determined to rebuild the house of the Lord. And then when he did, he had laid the foundation stone. Ituloy natin yung quote. Sabi niya, And as we read on further, we found out that God said, yung binasali sa Zechariah 4, Sirubabel has laid the foundation with his hands. He also shall bring forth the headstone. So, si Sirubabel na siyang naglay ng foundation with his hands, he shall also bring forth the headstone. At sabi niya, I want you to notice he never said he shall bring forth the cornerstone. Hindi sinabing he shall bring forth the cornerstone because the cornerstone is the foundation stone. Okay. He shall bring forth the headstone. Now, ayun yung binasa natin sa verse 7. Now, ituloy natin. Paragraph 50. And we know that the scripture says, that Jesus is the chief cornerstone and is also the headstone. Now, sabi ni Brother Branham, nang pinapaliwalag yung verse 7 ng Zechariah 4, that, Ze that Zerubbabel will bring forth the headstone. Sinabi sa Bible, hindi cornerstone, but the headstone. At alam natin, sabi niya sa scripture, si Jesus Christ siya yung chief cornerstone at siya rin yung headstone. Jesus is the chief cornerstone and he's also the headstone. At sabi, now, if we think for a few minutes, because we should have our spiritual thinking. Yeah. If we think for a few minutes, now, tinan niya, magta-type na siya, that the seventh church messenger, anong ginagawa ni Barbara Nam? Tinatype niya si Zerubbabel sa seventh church messenger. At alam niya, by revelation siya yun. He was identifying himself in the Bible. At sabi niya, now if we think for a few minutes that the seventh church messenger was to restore the faith of the children back to the faith, uh, back to the fathers. Because it's a time of restoration. At sabi niya, in other words, rebuild the church again under the power of the Spirit. So, anong ginagawa ni Barbara? Tinatype niya sa kanyang sa, tinatype niya si Rubabel sa seventh messenger, which is he himself. Okay. Nang sabi niya na itong seventh messenger, okay, was to restore the faith of the children back to the fathers because we are reading Zechariah. It's a time of restoration. Okay. At sabi niya, in other words, rebuild the church again. Why? Because the temple na pinag-uusapan natin dito is other than the church. Because the church is the temple. But it has to be rebuilt again. How? Mga kapatid, not by might, nor by power. 
But by the Spirit, say the Lord. Sabi niya. In other words, rebuild the church again. Who will rebuild it? The seventh messenger. Under the power of the Spirit. Not by power. Not by might. But by my Spirit. Say it the Lord. At sabi niya, not by organization, not by denomination, but by the Holy Spirit, God will bring forth the church in the last days. Natira niya, natira niya, because nagtatype siya, tuloy natin. At sabi niya, Zerubbabel, bumalik siya kay Zerubbabel. The prince with Joshua was the one that was to bring forth this headstone. He had laid the foundation. He took the people back to the foundation in type. I like that. Amen. Si Zerubbabel, he took the people back to the foundation in type. Why? Pagkat anong ginawa ni Zerubbabel? He laid the foundation because the foundation was destroyed. Tama ba? At anong ginawa ng propeta sa age na ito? Our Zerubbabel. Hallelujah! Nasira ang doctrine ng baptism, ng Godhead. Amen. At many denominations are thinking that Adam and Eve, they ate an apple. Amen. Anong gagawin? Amen. Ni Siro Mabel. Amen. Ibabalik niya yung foundation. He would lay foundation. Ang sabi ni Brother Branham, si Siro Mabel had laid the foundation. He took the people back to the foundation in type. Siya lamang yung type merong reality Because this is the restoration age Hayo, Merong propeta na pinalanaan ng Panginoon sa age na ito Amen Sa panahon ng restoration Man-made creeds, dogmas, tradition Ang pinapaniliwalaan ng tao Amen But our Zerubbabel would lay the foundation again and the same hand that laid the foundation will bring forth the headstone. Hallelujah! The same Zerubbabel. Amen. The same messenger. Who is Zerubbabel? The seventh messenger, sabi niya. Amen. That brought us back to the foundation. That brought us back to the apostolic doctrine. Will bring forth the headstone. Oh my, I like that. Amen. At anong nangyari mga kabatid? Nang out ang, ang ating Zero Babel. Amen. When he started to lay the foundation, napakaraming oppositions. Amen. Maraming mga kumokontra. Amen. Yung mga dating sumusuporta sa kanya na mga denomination, mga Pentecostal, when he started to correct them of their doctrine, they started to oppose them. Oh, sabi niya, yung speaking tongues, hindi yan ang evidence that you have the Holy Ghost. What was the prophet doing? He was bringing back the foundation that Apostle Paul laid, the master builder laid. Pero kinokorek niya sila. Ano nangyari? Ino-oppose niya sila. Until such time na nag-meeting-meeting yung mga, yung mga, yung mga maraming ministro from different organizations, sabi nila, let us set a meeting. Let's put Brother Branham in a trap para pamalian natin yung kanyang aral. Hindi natin alam kung saan niya nakuha yung kanyang mga aral. Especially dyan sa serpent scene na yan. Marahil pumunta yan ng bundok, may nakausap siya, kinintuan ng ganyang kwento. Pagkatapos tinuturo niya. What was that? They set a trap because they were opposing the teachings of the prophet. Merong hindrance. Hallelujah! But the angel come to the prophet of God. Sabi niya, this minister are setting a trap. Pero pumunta ka sa, sa sinasabi nila. Pero hindi sila matutuloy doon sa lugar. Amen. Na sinasabi nila sa iyo. Sa iba sila matutuloy na lugar. Ganito. Describe na yung, uh, uh, yung lugar na ganyan. Pinakita na ng Panginoon sa kanya. Nang iniimbitan siya, sabi, sabi sa kanya. O sige, pupunta ako pero... Doon sa lugar na inyong uh, sinasabi hindi matutuloy diyan. Hindi, nakapag uh, nakapag uh, nakapag-usap na kami. Na ibinuk na namin yung lugar hindi. Hindi matutuloy diyan. Ano nangyari? Hindi nga natuloy. Bagamat nauna sila na nagbuk sa lugar, may may impluwensyang tao na kinuha yung lugar. At natuloy sila doon sa lugar na sinabi niya, may pinagsabihan lang siyang isa. 
Diniscribe niya yung lugar. Pagkatapos sinabi niya kung sino ang uupo sa harapan, sinabi niya doon sa, sa tao. Itong upo dito, upo dito. Pagkatapos nang tumayo na yung, uh, yung uh, taong yun, sabi niya, you know, this meeting inanda natin. Pero alam niyo ba na hindi tayo natuloy sa una, pero bago nangyari yun, sinabi na ni Brother Branham. At alam niyo ba, kayo na mga ministro na nandyan. Sinabi ni Brother Branham kung saan kayo uupo. Now look at this. Oh, sabi nga sa Bible, mga kapatid, oh, who art thou, O oh, great mountain? <laughs> Before Sirobabel, thou shalt become plain. At dumayo si Brother Branham. After magbigay yung testimony ng taong yun. At sabi ni Brother Branham, Amen, ito ang turo ko. Amen, water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. One God. Amen, original sin. Ito ang turo ko. At sinasabi ko sa inyo, yung angel na nagsabi sa akin kung saan kayo uupo, siya yung nagturo sa akin dito. Na mga bagay na ito. At ngayon, I challenge you. Amen. Amen. Na tumayo kayo dito para pamalian. Amen. Yung aral na ito. Mga kapatid, sabi ni Barbara, that is the, the most silent conference na kanyang nadaluhan. Amen. Takot sila. Amen. Because the angel of the Lord was present. Hallelujah! Napagaramit maraming opposition. Sabi na ng Panginoon, Oh, great mountain before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be complained. Why, mga kapatid, na bagamat maraming oposisyon, maraming mga kilalang ministro sa mga organisasyon ay umuopo sa kanya, pero hindi nila mapipigilan because the church of God will be rebuilt again. Amen. The church of the living God will be restored back again. Walang pwedeng umadlang. Bagamat maraming kumukontra, hindi nila mapipigilan ang plano ng Panginoon. You know why? Because it's not by might nor by power, but by thy spirit, sayeth the Lord. Hallelujah! And that same Zerubbabel that laid the foundation. Uh, and what is that foundation? That was the same foundation that Apostle Paul laid. Sabi niya, as a master people, as a master builder, I lay the foundation which no one can lay. Amen. He just brought back, he just restored back the foundation. At mga kabatid, the same ministry that brought the foundation is the same ministry that brought the headstone. Have you seen the headstone? Come down. Amen. It brought back the headstone. 1963, the headstone came down. But the cornerstone is also the headstone. It's the same Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That headstone, Revelation 10, what Guaba siya, with an open book, this great mighty angel Guaba, with an open book. What is that? That is the headstone. Amen. Showing us, mga batid, that this is the restoration age. At nakita natin, amen, bagamat marami tayong aral na pinaniwalaan noon, nakala nating tama mali pala, pero ni-restore tayo ng Panginoon. Amen. Ni-restore niya lahat ng tamang doktrina. Amen. Pinalawak niya ang ating unawa. Binuksan niya ang misteryo. At nang ginawa nito, sabi nga Revelation 10.7, Amen. In the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God would be finished because he will bring forth the headstone. At nang nakita natin ang ginawa ng Panginoon, Anong sinisigaw natin ngayon? Salamat sa biyaya. Grace! Grace! When you saw that headstone na bumaba with an open book with the title deed in his hand, anong sinisigaw natin, Panginoon? Uh, it's not because of my worthiness. Hindi dahil ako'y ganito. Hindi dahil kilala ko. Hindi dahil may bilidad ako. Hindi dahil sa education ko. Amen. Mga kapatid, it's not Amen. By our own power, it's not by our own might, it's by the grace of God. Paano ka napunta sa minsayang ito? Isn't it by the grace of God? Paano ka na-restore sa tamang doktrina? Is not that by the grace of God? It's not because of what you've done, it's because of what He has done. 
you would not even understand this message if God did not quicken you. This is the work of God. Not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. Bakit natin naunawa ng kalaliban ng kanyang salita? Because it's not by our own intellect. It's by the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God that is revealing to us. Kaya wala tayong dapat ipagmalaki. Hallelujah! We could not put confidence in this flesh. Ako na makakaral ng Panginoon, wala akong kaya ipagmalaki. Pagkat ako mismo walang minsahe. It's just by the Spirit of God na meron akong pinapangaral. I understand that by experience. Many times hindi nyo lang alam tumatayo ako dito. If you would just see my notes, every time I would stand here, you could not imagine that I could speak for two hours. Amen. Kaya, sinasabi ko sa Panginoon, pagkatang pabahala ka ng Panginoon. Hindi, kayo ka, hindi pa organize, sinilagay ko dyan. Hindi ko nga, may tas hindi ko masundan. Amen. But, but I, Lord, I don't want to depend on my human ability. Alam niyo mga kapatid, I have a poor memory. Ayan ang problema ko na nag-aaral ako. Especially ng college. Mahirap, mahirap, mahirap ako sa memorization. Pero ewan ko ba kapag tumatayo ako dito, yung dapat kong maalala, naaalala ko. Why? Because it's not by might, nor by power, but by thy spirit, say at the Lord. Hallelujah! Kaya wala akong may pagmamalaki sa Panginoon. If I ever accomplish something in this ministry, it's not because of me, but because of Him. Hallelujah! Kaya sinasabi ko sa inyo mga kabatid, ano mang oposisyon na nakikita nyo maging sa ministeryo na pinagkaloob ng Panginoon sa inyo, huwag kayong susuko. Pagkat kasama natin ang Panginoon. What is the purpose of God calling you from, from denomination, calling you out from the world and giving you the Holy Ghost and let you work by the energy of the flesh? Tell me. If you would just work in the energy of the flesh, what's the purpose of giving the Spirit of God? Nang tinawag ka ng Panginoon, alam niya na hindi mo kaya yung mga challenges sa journey. That's the reason Ibinigay niya ang Espiritu Santo because it's not by your own might, it's not by your own power, but by the Spirit, say at the Lord. Why would God give you the Holy Ghost if He expect you to work in the energy of the flesh? The reason He gave you the Holy Ghost, Amen, pagkat alam niya hindi mo kaya, Amen. Kung minsan grabe na yung pressure, alam niya na hindi mo makakayanan. Yung mga problema, yung mga challenges, yung mga pagsubok. Amen. Hindi, mahirap ang buhay na kristyano. May persecution, may mga bagay kang isasacrifice. Amen. Kinakailangan mo, mga kapatid, na magpatuloy regardless of the position. Mahirap. Bagamat mahirap, mga kapatid, Amen. Kasama natin ang Espiritu Santo ng Panginoon. Masasabi niyo ang sinabi ni Apostle Paul, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. When I am weak, He is strong. For His strength is made perfect through my weakness. Alam mo, mahina ka sa bagay na yan. Alam mo, imposible ma-overcome mo yun. Pero na-overcome mo. Kaya sabi mo sa Panginoon, Panginoon, alam ko hindi ako yan. Kasi hindi ko kayang i-overcome yan. Pero bakit ko na-overcome? Yung pagsubok, bakit ko nakakayanan? Yung bigat ng problema. Pagkat alam ko, hindi sa aking lakas, hindi sa aking kapangyarihan, but by the Spirit of God. That's why no man can glory, no flesh can glory in the presence of God. Amen. It is only God that deserves praises and glory and thanksgiving. Oh, what a God we serve. Amen. Pastor, how sure are you 
that you would reach the end of the journey. I am sure, even because he is the author and finisher of my faith, anong inumpisa niya sa akin, tatapusin niya. Hindi tayo dadali ng Panginoon na ganito ng kalayo. Ang layo na nang nilakad natin pagkatapos iiwanan niya tayo, hindi mga kapatid. Amen. Yung inumpisa niya sa atin, tatapusin niya. Hallelujah! Kaya hindi tayo natatakot kahit dumating ang squeeze. It's not by our own might. It's not by our own power. But by the Spirit, saith the Lord. By the Spirit, ye shall overcome. What made you overcome? Do you think you're good? Do you think you're strong? No. Let the weak say, I am strong because of what the Lord has done. <laughs> Hallelujah! How can we accomplish anything without the Spirit of God? Not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit, say the Lord. Amen. Salamat sa Panginoon. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at the book of Acts. Look at the great and marvelous things that happened in the book of Acts. Do you think those were done through the energy of the flesh? No, it's not done by the energy of the flesh. Sabi na mga iba, bakit tinawag na action, acts of the apostles? No, it's not the acts of the apostles. It's the acts of the Spirit through the apostles, through His disciples. Do you think, mga kapatid, that Apostle Paul could make those kind of miracles by himself? No. It's the Spirit of God in Paul. Kaya nga nang kinagat ng viper si Apostle Paul, sinik niya lang, hindi siya natakot. Why? Because it's the Spirit of God protecting Paul. Amen. Ano bang na-accomplish sa Book of Acts? It's because of the Spirit of God. It's because of the angel of the Lord moving among the people. At sinasabi ko sa inyo kung ano yung alpha, siya rin omega. Pagkat yung cornerstone, siya rin yung headstone. Amen. The, um, the alpha has become the omega. At ang nandoon, ano nandoon sa alpha church, nakita natin mga kapatid, they are full of love. They are so united. Amen. Hindi makatagal ang kasalanan sa kanila. Why? Pagkat tatanggalin ng Panginoon. And I believe that this is the omega bride. At anong purpose ng restoration? To bring us back to the faith of our apostolic fathers. We are the continuation of the book of Acts. What is the book of Acts? It's the Acts of the Holy Ghost in the believers. Kaya nga, you would realize that it is He in you doing these things. It is He. Do you believe that? That Christ is finishing the work through the bride. This is Christ in bride form. Nasaan si Kristo ngayon? Nasa bride. Hallelujah. Kaya huwag kayo mag-alala. Amen. Makakayanan natin ito. Matatapos natin ito. Because the Spirit of God is in us. Ayan ang magbibigay sa atin ng kalakasan. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, alam nyo ba nang uh, nang ginawa yung tabernacle na we call it tabernacle of Moses. Moses was, went up to the mountain and he saw a vision of heaven. At ayun ang ginawa niyang pattern ng ginawa yung tabernacle. Because that tabernacle is Christ. It represents Christ. It is only a shadow of what is to come. 
Could you imagine si Moses, siya yung nakakita ng vision? Lahat ng gustong ipagawa ng Panginoon? Di ba? At makikita natin, yung plano na ibinigay sa kanya, yung pattern na ibinigay sa kanya ng Panginoon, kinakailangan niyang i-execute yun. Now look at what the Lord did dito sa Exodus 31. Exodus 31. Now, God already showed him the pattern tabernacle. He already saw the furniture na gagawin. He, ever, he saw everything in vision. Okay? Kung ano yung mga furniture sa bawat, uh, sa outer court, sa holy place, at sa most holy place. At sabi sa uh, chapter 31, verse 1 ng Exodus, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Ur, or of the tribe of Judah. Okay. Now look at this man, Bezalel. Ayan ang pangalan niya. Pinili siya ng Panginoon. Out of many people from the tribe of Judah, he chose this man. At anong sabi, sabi ng Panginoon kay Moses? And I have filled him with the Spirit of God. In wisdom, and in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. To devise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver, and in brass, and in cutting of stones, to set them, and in carving of timber, to work in all manner of workmanship. Now, napakahirap gawin yung uh, ipinapagawa ng Panginoon. Pero anong ginawa ng Panginoon? Sabi sa Bible, I have filled Basalel with the Spirit of God. In wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge. In all manner of workmanship. Na sinabi ni Moses sa kanya, ito ang plano. Mga kapatid, alam ni Basalel ang diskarte kung paano gawin yun. Why? Hindi dahil magaling si Basalel, but the Spirit of God filled him with wisdom. Do you see that? Nakita niyo mga kapatid, hindi magaling si Bezalel, magaling ang Diyos na nagbigay sa kanya ng karunungan. Eh, may kayo walang magaling sa atin. Diyos ang magaling. Amen. Huwag niyo isipin na magaling ako, hindi ako magaling. Ang Diyos ang magaling. Pagkat ang aking karunungan ay bigay ng Diyos. Kung wala yung karunungan na yan, wala akong may babahagi sa inyo. Pero marunong ang Diyos. He is the fountain of all wisdom and knowledge. Could you imagine even sa paggawa ng mga furniture yung furniture? Ang Panginoon, He filled this man with wisdom, with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in, all, in, in understanding para magawa niya yung nais ng Panginoon. Now, maraming hindi ka pinagagawa ng Panginoon ng minora, ng mercy seat. Pero alam natin, may pinapagawa lahat tayo, may pinapagawa ang Panginoon sa atin, meron tayong posisyon. Do you believe that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Yes. Diba? Kung isang, itong bagay na yan ay pinapagawa ng Panginoon, God has to fill you with wisdom and skill related to that. Pagka ayun ang pinapagawa niya sa'yo eh. Diba? Kung ako ay... ay Ay, ang, ang nais ng Panginoon sa akin ay pakainin ng kanyang mga anak. God is obligated to fill me with wisdom, with understanding, para may pakain ako. Or else, I would just try to work in the energy of the flesh. Ah, mag-iisip ako, magtuturo ko. Katapos, hindi ko maunawa na. Sa palagi ko, ganito, mag-invento na lang ako tuturo ko sa inyo. Why? Because I am using my intellect. Tama ba? Pero mga abad, makikita natin kung ang Diyos mayroong siyang gustong ipagawa sa iyo. He would also fill you with wisdom, with His Spirit to anoint you for the task. Kaya, bagamat mahirap sa tingin ng tao, ma-accomplish yun, magagawa mo yun because of the anointing of the Lord. Kaya salamat sa anointing. 
Without the anointing, wala tayong magagawa. Pero salamat sa Panginoon because of the anointing. Ano sa palagay niyo yung sa ministry na Pastor Fidel? Na siya nagsimula sa ministry. Ang dami madaming madam, madam, mga nahahakot na tao sa pagalay niyo dahil sa galing niya. Magaling si Pastor Peter dahil, dahil ano parang uh, kilala sa sandagupan. Kaya marami marami kilala sa sandagupan hindi pwedeng gawin yung ginawa niya noon. Do you see that? Yung na-accomplish sa ministry, bakit ganon? Hindi dahil magaling si Pastor Pedel. Hindi dahil mabilidad siya. Amen. Pero nilagisan siya ng Panginoon. Kaya nag-prosper yung ministry. Pagkat nang ginagawa niya yun, binibigyan siya ng karunungan ng Panginoon. Nandun yung leadership ng Panginoon. Kaya na-accomplish siya yun. Hindi dahil magaling siya. Hindi dahil mabilidad siya. Because of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! At mga kapatid, yung anointing nandito pa rin mga kapatid. Hindi natapos yung anointing. The same anointing na kumilo sa kanyang ministeryo is the same anointing na nagpapatuloy sa ministeryo na ito. Kaya wala kayong dapat ikatakot mga kapatid. Ano ba mga challenges? Mapagtatagumpayan natin. Hallelujah! Kaya this is a growing church. This is a healthy church. Why? Because the anointing is here. Hindi lamang yung pastor, bawat posisyon ina-anointan niya. Hallelujah! Why? Because mga kapatid, he want to bless the body, of, the mystical body. You know the reason kapag kaya ka nagre-regalo sa isang tao kasi mahal mo yung tao. Especially sa iyo. Sa lahat ng regalo na ibinigay ng Panginoon sa iglesia ito, ito ay palatandaan ng pagmamahal niya sa atin. Sabi sa Bible, For God so loved the Lord that He gave. You know, the reason why He gave is because He loved. Amen. Kaya lahat ng mga gifts, sabi sa Bible, He gave gifts into the body. We have apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers. Bakit niya ibigay niya ito sa body? Pagkat mahal niya yung body. Praise the Lord. Kaya napakabuti ng Diyos sa atin. At sabi sa verse 6, And I... Behold, I have given with him a holy abba. Okay. Nang ibig sabihin, si Bezalel, nilangis siya ng Panginoon, pero binigyan siya ng Panginoon ng helper. Kasi masyadong marami yung trabaho kung siya lang gagawa. And I, and I, behold, I have given him a holy abba, the son of Ahashimak, of the tribe of Dan. And in the hearts of all the wise-hearted, I have put wisdom that they may make all that I have commanded thee. Nang ibig sabihin, hindi lang si Bazalel. Siya yung main. Pero mga kapatid, kinakailangan niya ng helpers. Sabi nga ng prophet, bawat messenger of the age, merong mga helpers. Si Apostle Paul, meron siyang helpers. Nandiyan si Timothy, si Titus, si Epaphras. May mga helpers siya. Bagamat siya yung messenger. Amen of the age. Pero hindi nila alam ng Panginoon. Hindi nila kaya. Kinakailangan nila ng mga helpers na kinakailangan bigyan din ng Panginoon ng wisdom. At ganun din ang prophet of this age. Hindi niya kaya sa kanyang sarili. Binigay ang fivefold ministry which is the helper of the messenger. At ganun din sa local assembly. Kapag ang Diyos nagtalaga ng pastor, meron din siyang i-raise up na helpers pagkat alam niya hindi kakayari ng pastor. Amen. Pero magbibigay rin siya ng mga wisdom sa mga helpers, mga wise in heart. Ano ang kanilang gagawin? To work together to achieve the vision. To work together to do the work of the Lord kung ano man ang pinapagawa ng Panginoon. Kaya salamat sa Panginoon. God has given me helpers in this church. Salamat hindi ako nag-iisa. Hallelujah! Pagkat mahal ng Panginoon ng kanyang ministro, ayaw niyang abusuhin, kaya binigyan niya ng helpers. Amen! That's the goodness of God. Praise God. Praise God. 
Now, tingnan natin si Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Okay, binigay sa kanya yung scroll ni Prophet Isaiah. Okay, at binasa niya yung uh, mababasa sa Isaiah 61, bagkat that is a prophecy for him. Okay, sa verse 17, I look chapter 4 verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. This is a messianic prophecy. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? This was after the Spirit anointed him at River Jordan. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Ano sabi dyan? Because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Amen. Hindi, lang, hindi pala basta-basta ang mga aral. You have to be anointed to preach. Yes. Eh maraming nangangaral kayo, hindi anointed eh. Yes. Hindi kasi sila tinawag na mga aral. Pag ikaw'y tinawag ng Panginoon ng mga aral, obligado ang Panginoon na langisan ka. Hallelujah! Pagkat kung ikaw'y mga aral, you need the leadership of the Holy Ghost. You need the anointing of the Holy Ghost to teach you and to guide you, to give you wisdom. Alam, sabi ni Jesus Christ, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord anointed Jesus to do all these things. Now, tingnan natin ang sinabi ni Peter dito sa Acts chapter 10, nang siya'y nangaral kay Cornelius at sa kanyang sambahayan. Okay. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Anong sabi dyan? How God anointed Jesus of... Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Do you think in God's ministry He need the anointing of the Spirit? Do you think you don't need the anointing? <laughs> Jesus was anointed to do such things. Amen. Kaya tayo mga kapatid, we need to be led by the Spirit of God. Now, I'd like to end here, ano, dito sa 1 Chronicles 17. 1 Chronicles 17. Verse 1. And it came to pass as David sat in his house. Where was David? In his house. That was his palace. As David sat in his house, that David said to Nathan the prophet, Lo, I dwell in a house of cedars, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord remaineth under curtains. Now look at this. Pagkat alam natin nang uh, si David was anointed to be king ay uh, ang king of Tyre nagpadala siya ng mga cedars, mga masons, carpenters to build this palace. So para ko na-imagine napakaganda ng bahay ni David. It's made of cedars. Okay. First class wood. Napakalaki. And it was also the time that, the, that David brought the ark to Jerusalem. So, nakaupo siya sa kanyang bahay. Marami tinitingnan niya ang kanyang bahay, napakaganda. Sabi niya, ganda naman itong dwelling place ko. So, sabi niya dito kay Nathan, Lo, I dwell in the house of cedars, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord remaineth under curtains. Sabi niya, ang ganda nitong tahanan ko ah. Pero yung Ark of the Covenant, 
Ang sinisilungan niya lamang cortina, curtains. Pero look at the place I'm dwelling with or dwelling in. Then Nathan said unto David, Do all that is in thine heart, for God is with thee. Ano bang nasa puso ni David? David wanted to build a house for God. Sabi niya itong Ark of the Covenant. Just dwelling in curtains, ako nasa house of cedars. Nag sinabi niya yung kay Nathan, marahil nakita naman ni Nathan na parang maganda yung intention ni David, kaya sabi niya, do all that is in thine heart, for God is with thee. Verse 3, And it came to pass, the same night, the word of God came to Nathan saying, Now look, look at this, because God has to correct something. Sabi ni Nathan, sige, gawin mo. Kung ano mang nasa puso mo, gawin mo. The Lord is with you. Hindi na nagpalipas nag, nag, uh, na ng Panginoon ng ilang araw, ano? No, that's very same night. The Lord spoke to Nathan, the prophet. Okay. The word of God came to Nathan saying, Go and tell David my servant, Thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not build me an house to dwell in. Anong gusto ni, 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 ni David? Gawa ng Panginoon ng house. At ito naman si Nathan ang narinig niya, Ituloy mo kung nasa puso mo, God is with you. You see, you see, a prophet could also be wrong. Mali, akala niya, si, nag-go-signal yung prophet. Kaya hindi na pinabukas ng Panginoon that very same night, kinorek niya si Nathan. At sabi niya kay Nathan, sabihin mo kay David, thou shall not build me an house to dwell in. Huwag niya akong tatayuan ng bahay na aking titirhan. Now, I'd like you to catch this, ano? Because, Marahil, magandang intensyon ni David, pero sa mata ng Panginoon, David has shed much blood. He could not build a house for God. Now, tinan natin. At sabi niya, Thou shalt not build me a house to dwell in, for I have not dwelt in a house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day. Ito pala yung reason. Bago mo ako nga gawa ng bahay. For I have not dwelt in a house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day, but have gone from tent to tent and from one tabernacle to the to another. Okay, sabi mo sa kanya na wag niya kong napatatlayuan ng bahay. Kasi mula nang tinawag ko sila, okay, since the day I brought up Israel, sabi niya, that God has gone from tent to tent. Wala naman siyang uh, house. What house will you build me? Now, verse 6. Wheresoever, wheresoever I have walked with all Israel, is spake I a word to any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedars? Now, this was a question. Ito ang sabihin mo sa kanya. Marami na akong ginamit na mga judges sa Israel. Nainutusan ko na pakainin yung aking mga anak, ay yung aking mga tao, my people. Pero niminsan sa kanila, Ni minsan, hindi ko sinabi sa kanila na tayuan nila ako ng, baya, ng bahay made of cedars. Da- dahil kung kinakailangan, sasabihin ko sa kanila. Now look at this. Because you have to catch your, you know, the thought of, the, uh, of, of God here. Pagkat ito si David, ang ganda na kanyang tahanan. Sabi niya, ang ganda ng aking bahay. Ah. Tapos yung, uh, yung art, nandun lang sa tent. Mga portents lang. Parang hindi naman magandang tingnan. So, oh, like an excuse, sa kanya magandang tahanan, gusto niya rin gawa ng magandang lugar. Yung Ark of the Government, he wanted to make a house for God. So here comes David thinking, well, 
Uh, I am blessed materially. Tingnan mo naman itong bahay ko. Ganda-ganda. Palasyo. Uh, I want to do something for God. Gagawan ko naman siya ng magandang tirahan din. It looks God. Uh, it looks na He would do a favor to God. Pero sabi ng Panginoon sa kanya, sabi, niya, sabi ng Panginoon kay Nita, sabi mo kay David, huwag niya akong gagawa ng bahay. Mula nang ilabas ko ang Israel, Hanggang ngayon, okay, I am dealing with them from 10 to 10. Nang ako ay naga, nagsugo ng mga judges to feed my people, meron ba akong sinabihan sa kanila na gawan niyo ako ng house made of cedars? Hindi ko pinagawa yun. Dahil kung uh, gusto ko talaga niyan, sasabihin ko, gagawa nila ako. Are you catching that? Verse 7. Now, therefore, thus thou shalt say unto my servant David. Pero itong sabihin mo sa kanya. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, even from following the sheep, that thou shouldest be ruler over my people Israel. Pero itong sabihin mo sa kanya. Gusto ko pag pumunta ka sa kanya, i-review mo yung buhay niya. Ipaalala mo sa kanya yung kanyang humble beginning. Kasi ang ganda na yung kanyang tinitirhan eh. Ipaalala mo sa kanya. Okay. Na dati ordinary lang naman siya eh. Nag-aalaga ng tupa. Nagpapastol ng tupa. Marahil hindi kilala. Or uh, hindi masyadong binibigyan ng pansin. Pero sabi ng Panginoon, but I took him from the sheep coat and made him ruler over Israel. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Na ano man ang kinalalagyan ni David ngayon, ang Diyos ang gumawa. Mula doon sa kanyang humble beginning, inangat siya ng Panginoon from a shepherd boy to a king. Verse 8, And I have been with thee. Now, ito yung sinasabi ni, ni, ng Panginoon. Itong sabihin mo sa kanya, kay David. And I have been with thee, whithersoever thou hast walked. Sinamahan ko siya. And have cut all thine enemies from before thee. Ako ang nakipaglaban para sa kanya. Nag-ibig sabihin, ako nagbigay ng victory sa kanya, sa kanya mga kaaway. And have made thee a name like the name of the great men that are in the earth. At yung pakaral na David, ginawa kong kilalang pakalan, tulad ng mga ibang pakalan na kilala. Verse 9. Also, I will ordain a place for my people Israel. And will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place, and shall be moved no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more, as at the beginning. As uh, the promise for the Israel, God will give them a land not to be displaced anymore. Verse ten. And since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, because there were, there were times of judges. Judges were before kings. Okay. Since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, moreover, I will subdue all thine enemies. Furthermore, I tell thee that the Lord will build thee a house. Will build thee a house. Ito si David. Gusto niyang i gusto niyang tayuan ang Diyos ng bahay. Sabi ng Panginoon kinita, sabi mo sa kanya, huwag niyang gagawin. Okay. At sabi, i-review mo siya sa kanyang buhay. Na dati lamang siya ay pastol ng tupa. Pero inangat ko siya, ginawa ko siyang hari. At yung kanyang pangalan naging tanyag. At sinasabi niya na, Tatayuan niya ako ng bahay. Pero sabihin mo sa kanya, I will build the house. Oh, look at that. Gusto niyang tayuan 
ang Panginoon ng bahay, pero sabi ng pamukay Nathan, sabihin mo kay David, ako ang magtatayo ng bahay sa kanya. I tell thee that the, okay, furthermore, I tell thee that the Lord will build thee an house. <laughs> Verse 11. And it shall come to pass when thy days be expired that thou must go to be with my father, with, uh, to be with my fathers. And I will raise up thy seed after thee which shall be of thy sons, and I will establish his kingdom. Na marahil, uh, paalala mo yung mga bagay nyo kay David, marahil si David, uh, akala niya ang biyaya ng Panginoon, ganito lang, o oh, inangat siya ng Panginoon, pagkatapos naging hari siya and so on. Magandang kanyang kinalalagyan, dati ang bahay niya malit lang ngayon, malaki na, palasyo na. Pero sabihin mo sa kanya, when his days are expired, ibig sabihin, kapag siya'y namatay na. Oh, could you imagine that? Hindi pala nag-stop doon yung grace ng Panginoon kay David. Kapag siya'y namatay na. Maybe, hindi nga iniisip ni David yung kanyang kamatayan. Pero sabi ng Panginoon, ito sabihin mo nito sa kanya, kapag siya'y namatay na, when thy days be expired, that thou must go to be with thy fathers, I will raise up as thy seed after thee. Ako ay magre-raise nas ng seed mo, which shall be of thy sons, na isa sa iyong mga anak, and I will establish his kingdom. At establish ko yung kanyang kingdom. Now, he was not referring to Solomon. That seed na tinutukoy dito ng Panginoon is no other than Jesus Christ, the Son of David. Now, uh, i-cut muna natin dyan. No? I, I, I'll just show you to say sa scripture. Okay, pagkat sabi sa verse 14, okay, that His throne shall be established forevermore. Itong seed na ito, His throne will be established forevermore. Now, alam natin when uh, the book of Matthew opened up, tingnan natin sa Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. Look at how Jesus Christ was introduced here. Matthew 1, verse 1. The book of the generations, generation of Jesus Christ, ano sabi dyan? The son of David. So Jesus was from the tribe of Judah. Pagkat ang prophecy, the scepter will not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes. Now, I am showing you na yung, yung seed na tinutukoy doon sa Chronicles is no other than Jesus. Tingnan natin sa Luke chapter 1. Sinab- Luke chapter 1 verse 30. Yung sinabi mismo ng anghel kay Mary. Luke chapter 1 verse 30. And the angel, that's Gabriel, said unto her, Mary, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. Ano sabi dyan? And the Lord God shall give unto him, the throne of his father David. Why? Pagkat ayun ang pangako ng Panginoon kay David na pinasabi niya kay Nathan that God will establish his throne forever. Merong seed siyang lalabas. At alam natin si Jesus Christ as the son of David, sabi doon, the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David because he was a seed of David, ano? Or the seed of David. Now, tingnan nga natin dito sa Acts chapter 2. Pagkat nang nangaral dito si Pedro, okay, bumalik siya doon sa sinabi ng Panginoon kay Nathan. Acts chapter 2. Uh, Acts chapter 2 verse 29. Ito yung nangaral si Peter. 
Acts chapter 2, verse 29. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. Okay? That he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Okay? Patay na si David. Therefore, being a prophet. So, si David, prophet siya. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him. Ibig sabihin, nangako ang sa Panginoon sa kanya. God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins. Ibig sabihin, seed. Ibig sabihin, anak niya. That of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to seed on his throne. Amen. So, sino yung seed? Yung fruit? Na yun. It's no other than Jesus Christ. Because he, yung, 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 yung kingdom ni Solomon, it was not established forever. Natapos yun. Pero si Jesus Christ, his throne would be established forevermore. Are you catching that? Now, maganda, sigo, maganda rin nagbabasa tayo, no? Uh, I'm just giving you scriptures. Uh, I'll read more Bako ko break down Romans 1 uh, 1 to 3 ano? You could see here How uh, Apostle Paul Addressed Jesus Sabi niya Paul A servant of Jesus Christ Called to be an apostle Separated unto the gospel of God Which he had promised Afore by his prophets In the holy scripture Concerning his son Jesus Christ Our Lord which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. So he is the seed of David. Okay? At look at he, Jesus himself here, so Revelation 23. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, revel- uh, wala, walang Revelation 23, ah. Uh, let, let me check. Uh, dito sa Revelation uh, 22, verse 16. Uh, sabi dito, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and of offspring of David. Nang siya'y nagkatawang tao, he became offspring of David, pero siya rin yung root ni David. Okay? Root and offspring of and the bright and morning star. Kaya nga, prophet sa Old Testament, okay, kapag nagre-refer sila sa kingdom, they always refer to kingdom, the kingdom that's coming, is because of the promise of God to David about this kingdom. Tinanang natin, for example, si Jeremiah, sa, sa Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5. Anong sabi dyan? Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. Okay? Pag sinabing branch, is seed, ano? Yeah. Kasi nagmula doon sa, sa puno. And a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Now look at this. It's prophesying about the kingdom, about this king, hindi pinangalanan. Now, balik tayo dito ngayon sa ating uh, sa binabasa sa 1 Chronicles 17. I'm just explaining it to you, no? Kasi pwede ko namang explain lang, but I also show you the scriptures. Uh, Tinan natin sa chapter 17 of 1 Chronicles chapter 17, verse 11. And it shall come to pass when thy days be expired that thou must go to be with thy fathers. Okay? That I will raise up thy seed after thee that shall be of thy sons and I will establish his kingdom. At anong sabi sa verse 12? And he shall build me an house. At itong sin mo na ito, 
nalalabas sa'yo, it means uh, he is the seed of David, I will establish a kingdom and he will build me a house. Now look at this. Ito si, ito si, si David, gusto niyang gawa ng Panginoon ng bahay. Nakawa natin? Gusto niya gawa ng Panginoon ng bahay. Maray naisip niya, naisip niya yung tabernacle of Moses. Pero hindi niya alam, yung tabernacle of Moses, that was a pattern that God showed to Moses. Because yung tabernacle, that is the type of Jesus. Diba? Pero gusto niya pang gawa na ng, ng bahay ang Panginoon. At dito, sabi ng Panginoon, mula sa iyo, sa iyong seed, okay, I will raise up one of your seeds at mula sa kanya, I will establish his kingdom and he shall build me a house and I will establish his throne forever. So, sino yung seed na ito? Si Jesus Christ. At itong seed na ito, he shall build me a house. Ano yung house na itatayo ng, uh, ng seed na ito? Tayo yung house. Upon this rock, I will build my church. Pagkat ito, si, si David gusto niyang patayo ng Panginoon ng house, pero hindi, hindi, sabi niya. Amen. Magre-raise up ako. Amen. Nang seed mo, his kingdom would be established forever. And he will build me a house. Ayan ang dumating si Jesus Christ. Anong sabi niya? Amen. Upon this rock, I will build my house. Pagkat si Solomon, mga kapatid, siya ano lang. Ang reality, si Jesus Christ. Yung templo na ginawa ni Solomon, ang reality nun, si Jesus Christ, ay sa, ang reality yung bride. Now, look at this. Gusto ko sana, anak mo, yung gagawa ng seed na ito, ay yung maggagawa ng tempo. Okay, mula sa yung seed, okay, I will raise up that seed, I will establish his kingdom, and he shall build me a house. Ibig sabihin, yung gagawa ng house, ibig sabihin, he shall build me a temple, yung gagawa ng temple, seed of David. Nagawa natin. At itong temple na kanyang gagawin, Ibang temple ito. Kasi yung tabernacle of Moses, ang reality nun si Jesus Christ. At yung temple na ginawa ni Solomon, which is the seed of David, ang reality yung bride. Itong temple na kanyang itatayo is no other than the bride of Jesus Christ. He shall build me a house and I will establish He's throne forever. Oh my. Binasa ko sa inyo kanina, si Jesus Christ yan. Now look at this. I will be his father and he shall be my son and I will not take my mercy away from him as I took it from him that was before thee and I will settle him in my house and in my kingdom forever and his throne shall be established. So sabi niyan, forevermore. Ayan yung sinabi ng anghel kay Mary. His kingdom shall have no end. Now, look at this now. So yung, yung son dito na tinutukoy was actually Jesus Christ. Yung ginawa ni Solomon Kumbaga, rehearsal lang yun ng reality. Pero yung true son na tinutukoy dito is to other than Jesus Christ. Nakuha natin. Pero itong temple na gagawin, kasi yung tabernacle of Moses, ang tipot larawan nun ni Jesus Christ, sa yung house, sa yung tabernacle. Diba? Yung tabernacle of Moses, shadow lang yun si Jesus Christ, yung reality. The world was made flesh. Diba? Pero, Ang gagawa ng temple, kinakailangan seed of David. Pagkat itong temple na gagawin, ito yung bride. So yung ginawa, yung ginawa ni Solomon na templo, ayun lamang ay naglalarawan ng gagawin na templo. Pagkat yun ay tipot larawan ng greater temple, 
because the greater temple is no other than the bride of the Jesus Christ, the church of the living God. At alam natin, mga kabatid, yung temple na yun, hindi pwedeng tatipot larawan ni Jesus Christ. Although He was a temple, siya yung type ng tabernacle ni Moses, but na tabernacle of Solomon. Pagkat yung temple na yun nasira. Aba! Amen! Pero mga kabatid, bagamat nasira, merong restoration na gagawin ng Panginoon! Now, So si David na naglarawan dito ng God. Katapos, and his son Jesus Christ, si Jesus Christ gumawa ng temple. Okay, which is the church of the living God. Now, so hindi pinayagan ng Panginoon na gumawa si David, ano? Okay. At pinaliwalag din ng, uh, ng Biblia na si David marami siyang, pagkatwaro siya, marami siyang shedded na blood. He could not make a house for God. Pero sabi ng Panginoon sa kanya, gagawan kita ng house. At mula sa yung seed, Amen, I will raise him, establish his throne forever, and he will build a house. He will build me a house, which is the church of the living God. Now, tinan natin. According to all these words, and according to all the visions, so did Nathan speak unto David. At ano nangyari? Pumunta si Nathan, nirelay sa kanya yung sinabi ng Panginoon. Okay, parang uh, feeling kasi ni David, kawawa naman ng Diyos. Bakit yung bahay niya? Ang ganda ng bahay ko. Uh, gagawa ko siya ng pabor. Patatayon ko rin siya para hindi naman siya kawawa ko. Yung mga ibang nasyon na lalaki ng kanilang ng templo ng kanilang mga Diyos. Itong uh, Diyos ng Israel, uh, he was dwelling in tents. Pero sabi mo kay Nathan, sabi mo sa kanya, huwag niyang gagawin yan. Okay? At sabihin mo sa kanya, yung kanyang pinagmulan. Dati lamang siyang pastor ng tupa, but I raised him to be a king. At sabihin mo sa kanya, I will build a house for him. Now, let's see na ano yung impact kay David na, impact kay David, na sinabi kay David to, verse 16. And David the king came and sat before the Lord. Kanina, Nang gusto niyang patayuan ng bayang Diyos, nandun siya sa kanyang palasyo, nakaupo siya. Pero nang sinabi sa kanya yung ni Nathan, yung minsay ng Diyos, pumunta siya doon. Kung nasaan yung kinaroroonan ng ark. And David the king came and sat before the Lord. Umalis siya sa kanyang palasyo, pumunta siya doon. Na sinasabi niyang tent. And said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou hast brought me hither to? Why? Pagkat nang dumating si Nathan sa kanya, pinaalala niya yung kanyang history. Sabihin mo kay David, I took him from the sheep coat. Mula sa pastol ng tupa, iniangat ko siya and he became ruler of Israel. At nang narealize, naalala yun ni David, wala pala siyang dapat ipagmalaki. Akala niya ang ganda-ganda ng kanyang bahay. Pero ang Diyos din ang nagkaloob ng, na, na, ng bagay na yun sa kanya. Ang Panginoon ang nag, naglagay sa kanya na lukluka na bilang hari. Na lahat ng kanyang tinatamasa ay dahil sa biyaya ng Panginoon sa kanyang buhay. At nang narealize niya ang grasya ng Panginoon, narealize niya ang ginawa ng Panginoon sa kanya, when God gave him a review of his life, Ang sabi niya, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou hast brought me hither to? Nang ibig sabi mga kabatid, If you understand the grace of God, that will make you humble. If you, the grace of God humbles you. Kapag nakita mo ang lawak ng Panginoon, na lawak ng biyaya ng Panginoon sa iyo, wala kang dapat ipagmalaki sa Panginoon. You can see your nothingness. Kasi yung kanyang feeling ng ulo, oh, gusto niyang patayuan. Para ba kawawa ang Diyos? Sabi ng Panginoon, kung matagal nang gusto ko yan, sinabi ko sa mga judges ko yan eh. Pero itong gagawin ko, ikaw ang patatayuan ko na, I will build you a house. 
At tandaan mo, David, hindi ka naman nasa luklukan na yan kung hindi ako gumawa sa buhay mo. Dati ka lang ordinaryong tao. Dati ka lang pa, nagpapastol ng tupa. Pero akong nag-angat sa'yo. Nilang ginawa kitang hari from a shepherd boy to the king. At sa mga digmaan mo na mula kay Goliath at sa mga wars mo na pinagdaanan, ako ang nakipaglaban sa'yo. Binigyan kita ng victory sa iyo mga kalaban. At nang naalala yun ni David, nang pinarecall ng Panginoon yun sa kanya, Amen, when he saw the grace of God, Amen, na lahat ng kanyang accomplishment, it's not because of his own power, not because he is mighty, but it's by the grace of God, it's by the Spirit of God. Nang narealize ni David, yung grasya ng Panginoon, hindi pa pala natapos doon. Magi kapag namatay na siya, Amen, God would raise up, Amen, the seed of David, and He will establish His throne forever. Nang narealize niya ang grasya ng Panginoon, oh, it humbles his heart. Sabi niya, sino ako, Panginoon? Oh, Lord, who am I, oh, Lord God? And what is my house? Hindi kilala ang house of Jesse. Mga simpleng pamilya lamang kami. Pero tingnan mo ang ginawa mo sa amin. That thou hast brought me hither to. Mga I'm showing you this because it's not my own might, by your power. It's all by the grace of God. Kaya nga si David minsan, he numbered the people, his army, Nagalit ang Panginoon. Pagkat, David, bakit mo number yung army mo? Sa palagay mo na nanalo kayo sa digmaan dahil sa lakas ng pwersa ng military mo, hindi mo ba alam na ako nagbibigay ng victory? Nagalit ang Diyos. Because it's not by your own might, by your own power. David, lahat ng na-accomplish mo sa buhay ay dahil sa biyaya ko. Mga kapatid, kung makita mo ang biyaya ng Diyos sa buhay mo, ma-realize mo that you are nothing. Ma-realize mo, mga kapatid. Amen. Nanarating ko ang estadong ito. Amen. Dahil sa biyaya ng Panginoon. Maray sabi ni David, o oh, dati itong tinitiran ko, dating hapag kainan ko ito lamang nakakay ko, pero ngayon nag enjoy na ako, ito'y dahil sa biyaya ng Panginoon. Iniangat niya ako. At kung na-realize mo, ayun ay biyaya ng Panginoon. At hindi mo sa sariling gawa, hindi sa iyong kalakasan, amen, nangyari yun sa buhay mo. Mga kabatid, the grace of God will make you humble. Amen! Para kang nahiya sa Panginoon. Panginoon, sino ba ako? na pinili mo ako, tinawag mo ako sa dusak ng kasalanan, nilabas mo ako sa maling reliyon, dinala mo ako sa minsang ito, sino ako, Panginoon? Mga kabatid, biyaya ng Panginoon na nasumpungan natin ang minsang ito. Biyaya ng Panginoon na naulawan yung minsang ito. Biyaya ng Panginoon na naiahayag ang mga bagay na ito sa atin. It's all by the grace of God. It's not by our might. It's not by our own power. Kaya wala tayo may pagmamalaki sa Diyos kung nakita natin na ito'y biyaya ng Diyos sa atin. Oh my. Who am I, O Lord? O Lord God, And what is mine house that thou hast brought me hither to? And yet this was a small thing in thine eyes, O God. For thou hast also spoken of thy servant's house for a, a great while to come. Why? Because God has promised him a house, a kingdom, and has regarded me according to the estate of a man of high degree, O Lord God. What can David speak more to thee for the honor of thy servant? For thou knowest thy servant. O Lord, for thy servant's sake and according to thine own heart hast thou done all this greatness in making known all these great things. Salamat sa Panginoon. Not by might nor by power, 
but by the Spirit of the Lord. The same hand that laid the headstone is the same hand that bring forth the headstone. Amen. With shouting, ano isinisigaw? Grace, grace, grace. Amen. Alam niyo mga kapatid, when we reach the end of our journey, at tayo magayakapan, magkakamayan, ang pwede natin sabihin, it's all by the grace of God, brother. It's by the grace of God, my sister. Amen. It's grace that will bring us home. Mga kapatid, biyaya ng Panginoon. Kaya mga kapatid, sabi ng Panginoon kay Sinubabel, kap, uh, kay, kay Sikaraya, kapag na, 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 yung headstone ay bumaba na, na ilapitag na yung bumaba, sisigaw sila, grace, grace. Ibig sabihin kapag natapos yung templo, yung finishing, finishing stone ay nailagay na ano yung sisigaw? Hindi, ang galing namin. Oh, matalino kami, hindi. Sisigaw yung lahat, grace. Grace, grace. Hallelujah! Kaya mga kapatid, ngayon pa lang, isinisigaw na natin, grace, thank God, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Hallelujah! Nilay ng Panginoon ng foundation to build, to rebuild the church again. Bumaba yung headstone, mga kabatid. The same cornerstone is also the headstone. At salamat sa Panginoon. Bakit natin narating ang ganitong estado? Bakit narating natin ang ganitong unawa? Amen. Sa dami-dami ng tao sa buong mundo, bakit narito tayo, mga kabatid? Hindi tayo bulag. Amen. Binuksan ng Panginoon ang ating mata. Nilinisan tayo ng Panginoon. Pinuspos niya tayo ayon ng banal na Espiritu Santo at sabihin niyo sa akin if this is not grace this is the grace of God Lord who am I amen that thou would be mindful of us this is grace kaya mga kapatid salamat sa Panginoon amen if you understand the grace of God it will make you humble kasi pag hindi mo nawa na nawa ng grasya ng Diyos mayabang ka eh Feeling mo ikaw. Amen. Pag naunawaan mo sa grasya lamang ng Panginoon, wala kayo pagmamalaki. Kung ikaw inangat ng Panginoon, medyo in-upgrade ka ng Panginoon, you would not look down to others. No. Alam mo na narating mo yung bihaya ng Panginoon. Ano'y pagmamalaki mo? Sa palagay mo, si David, dahil sa kanyang abalitan, naging hari siya, No. Ang Diyos ang gumawa kaya siya'y naging hari. Hallelujah! Kaya salamat sa Panginoon. Amen. Dakila siyang papurihan. Dakilain. He deserve all glory and honor and praises. Na masasabi mo sa Panginoon, Lord! Ano ba ang blessing na tinatamas ako ngayon? Ano bang meron ako na ini-enjoy? It's all by the grace of God. Kaya dapat ka lamang papurihan. Dapat ka lamang may taas because of the great works that you have done in my life. Kaya wala tayong dapat ipagmalaki. Ang Diyos ang papuri. Sa Diyos ang papuri. Amen! Hallelujah! Kahit ako rin minsan, if I see my present state, mga kapatid ko minsan, I feel ka. Nahiya ako sa Panginoon. Diba? Because we all started with a humble beginning. Pero when we see the things that we are in now, the things that we enjoy in life, the things that the Lord has done even in this church, na itong minisya na ito nag-start lamang sa maliit na bahay, na old house. Diba? Halos walang makain. Kinakain mga lugaw na walang manok, walang sahog. Pinapagata sila mami dati, yung uh, pag nagluto ng kanin, dadamihan ng tubig para may may pagata sa kanyang mga anak. 
That was a humble beginning. But look where you are now. Isn't it God's grace? Isn't it the grace of God? Nagsimula man tayo sa ministry na parang gumagapang, pero hindi tayo natatili doon. Salamat sa grasya ng Panginoon. Salamat sa biyaya ng Panginoon. The Lord is good all the time. Hallelujah! The goodness of God. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Amen. Amen sa iyo mga trials. It's the grace of God. Amen. Nagbigay sa iyo ng kalakasan. It's the grace of God that, uh, that, uh, that let you overcome all the challenges. Amen. Sa panahon na parang susuko ka na, you wanted to give up. It's the grace of God that drops down and give you the strength that you need. Sa, sa panahon na parang susuko ka na, hindi mo na kaya. Amen. With but the grace of God. Amen. Inabot ka. Alam niyo, sabi ni Brother Barnum, if, I, if it had not been by the grace of God, I would have been a quitter and a murderer. Amen. Pagkat nang binugbog siya, mga kapatid, kinuha niya yung rifle nila sa bahay, babarilin niya yung mga, yung mga bata na bumugbog sa kanya. Pero mga kapatid, pinigilan siya ng Panginoon. Amen. Hindi pumutok yung baril. Kaya sabi niya, if had not been by the grace of God, I would have been a murderer. Nang namatay si, si ang kanyang asawa na si Hope at si, si Sharon, gusto niya magpakamatay. Kinuha niya yung kanyang revolver, pinuputok niya, ayaw pumutok. Amen. Pum- uh, nang umakit siya sa posto, inawakan niya yung high voltage. Pumikit siya. Pagdating niya, nandun siya sa baba. But why? why? Pag, kaya sabi niya, if it had not been by the grace of God, I would have been a quitter. Why? Pagkat nagkaroon siya ng two attempts ng suicide, pero yung grace ng Panginoon, pinigilan siya. Hallelujah! At yung pagpigil sa kanya ng Panginoon, alam niyo, pag isa sa, amen, diaya din ng Panginoon niyo sa atin. Amen. Because when the Lord, amen, prevent Brother Branham sa, sa kanyang, sa kanyang uh, ginagawang suicide, the Lord was thinking about you. <laughs> Hallelujah! When he planned to end his life, even the Lord is thinking about you because this man was sent to restore all things. Amen. To lay back the foundation and to break down the headstone. Hallelujah. Amen. When God sent Elijah, he was thinking of you. Tama ba, mga kapatid? Mga kapatid, nang tinawag ng Panginoon si Pastor Fidel sa kanyang ministeryo, he was thinking of you. Hallelujah! Nang tinawag ako ng Panginoon sa ministeryo, he was thinking of you. That's the grace of God. Nang tinawag si Pastor Fidel, nandun ka pa sa kasalanan, nandun ka pa sa maling reliyon, pero tinawag siya ng Panginoon pagkat mahal ka ng Panginoon. Hindi ba't biyaya yan ng Panginoon? Hallelujah! Kaya salamat sa Panginoon. Panginoon, narating ko ang estadong ito sa iyong biyaya. It's not by my own might. It's not by my own power. But by thy spirit, say it the Lord, to God be the glory. Hallelujah! Tayo po lahat ay tumayo. Purihin natin ang Panginoon. Decisions, please come. Do you see God's faithfulness? Oh, God is good, Brother Jerry. Amen. Amen. It humbles me to see the goodness of God. It humbles me to see the grace of God. Maganda siguro ang awitin niyan, Brother JV. Can we sing that song, Goodness of God? Amen. Yeah, let's praise the Lord. Napakabuti ng Diyos. Praise the Lord.